Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence. My name is Janice Fogarty, and I'm a communications strategist. This podcast is where I get to talk about all things strategic communications, including content creation and messaging. So whether you create content for your business or as your business, I know you're going to find something in each episode that contributes to your success. Thank you so much for being here today. And now, here's today's episode. Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence with me, Janice. And if you're listening on the week that this is released, which is October 10th, or Thanksgiving Day here in Canada, and you follow me on social media, then you probably know I didn't upload anything last week. Our province got hit pretty badly by post-tropical storm Fiona, and even still, more than two weeks later, we have people out of power on our internet at home, which at least lets us watch Netflix. Well, I'll be pretty impressed if it lets me upload this recording. We're safe. Our roof is patched up and still over our heads. We have running water and the lights turn on in our house when we flick the switch. So really, my gratitude knows no bounds. Tired. As a province, you can see it. Everyone is tired. And this experience has been an incredible eye-opener because despite my neighbors losing their vehicles and other neighbors having a tree come through the roof, like we have insurance and we have generators and in the city we never lost our water. We had the army and crews come from neighboring provinces to help clear trees and really restore a semblance of civility. The people who get hit, who have no such support, those people are weighing heavily on me. I I don't mind telling you, I've had a few extra additions to my gratitude list when I journal, but I'm, I'm back. If you're listening, I trust this uploaded. And I've had lots of opportunity to think and observe, listen and mull over, and I might have some observational case studies coming. There's nothing like a crisis to test an organization's communications plans and skills. That's another day. Now on to today's episode around social media. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that I subscribe to a number of email lists. Some are from very small businesses. Businesses like mine, with one full-time person and maybe a part-time virtual assistant. Some are from larger businesses with a team of 10 or more. And some are from big multinationals. I read 99% of them. To be honest, sometimes delete the ones from stores when I don't want to be tempted to shop. But there's always something to be learned from all of them. Not just in the knowledge that they impart, but the way that they do it. The method of delivery can tell you something just as much as the actual message does. As a social media manager, of course I get emails from Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and more. It's professional development in mini bites, which can be done so well through email marketing. Of course, Meta has a video series called Social Skills, where they interview brands about their social strategies, how they find success using, oh, you guessed it, meta technologies. Now let's take a sidestep here. When someone says that they interview brands, that bugs me. A company doesn't sit down on a beautiful couch in the middle of a professionally staged set and talk with the interviewer. A person does. And that, my friend, is PR. That chance to sit with someone in front of their audience and talk about your position, your strategy, your business, and portray yourself as the expert or as friendly and trustworthy or as environmentally aware, or whatever your communications goal is for your brand. That is incredible exposure for you, but it's you representing your brand. Marketing would be talking about your product. PR is talking about your business or yourself. But that's not the point I wanted to make in this episode. I want to talk about one of the interviews that I watched with a company called Market, with a representative from a company called Market. They do streetwear, such as hoodies, t-shirts, shorts, but also things like pillows. The director of content was interviewed, and he talked about how they engage their audience, how they get ideas from Instagram, where 99% of their purchasers hang out. They see something cool that's trending, they ask their audience, they design it that day, and they drop it the next. It's fast! 
they drop something new every single weekday. Five times a week, they drop something new. And they post a few times a day. They have an IG live series featuring their founder and creative director. They are highly collaborative. When I heard this, I was struck with two emotions. One was awe. They use this strategy as an audience engagement and sales tactic. They look, they ask, they listen, they create, they launch. It's like the first three steps of the product life cycle in hyper speed and on hyper repeat. It's amazing and it fits with their brand. And honestly, speed always impresses me as I am something of an overthinker. I stray to the other side of that continuum. Now, okay, tell the truth. When you heard me say that they post several times a day and they drop a new product five days a week, did you have a little clutch in your tummy? Because while my first feeling was of awe, my second one was of dismay. Because when the average business owner or content creator sees this headline that they drop a new product every single day, social media becomes overwhelming as a result. A new business or a small business with little by way of support will look at this headline and think, oh my word, I cannot do that and actually run my business and take care of my private life. This thought is usually quickly followed by, well, I guess I can't do social media. Social media is not for me. And then they think, oh no, but social media is where I need to be to reach new customers. And if I can't do that, what will I do? I better go get a J-O-B. And none of that is necessarily true. Although I do understand that thought loop. You probably don't need hyperactivity on social media to survive. And yeah, I do consider posting several times a day hyperactive. But some social media sure helps. Let's pick this myth that we need social media and we must be on it several times a day. Let's pick that apart a bit so we can approach our strategy with a more clear-minded and realistic perspective. First, let's look at our source for this story. In fact, for most stories that perpetuate the myth that constant social media is necessary for business survival. In this instance, the source is Meta, the very company who makes money from us being there. In fact, if you had a look at the businesses behind the faces telling you you really need to do more social media, you're going to find a product or a service designed to fill that need. And that's true of every business, not just social media ones, right? They're using the sales tactic of poking your pain point. It's effective, more so in this instance, because it's pervasive. It has not just a lot of money behind it with companies like Meta pouring into productions like Social Skills, but it also has a lot of voices singing from that same hymn sheet. There's like an echo chamber of, you must be on social media every day and repeat. And some people will frame it as they're trying to help you. Some will frame it as they're trying to save you. And some frame it as it's your choice. I'm not judging too harshly because we're all trying to make money. Although I do have to say I resent fear-based tactics. It's not my style. To be completely transparent, if this is your first interaction with me, I have a whole masterclass on creating your social media strategy. And I do this work for clients but I never say how often you must post or that posting or even my way of creating content is the only way to get traction in your business because there's no universal magic number. There's no one size fits all strategy for every business and not all businesses need to have a massive social standing. They can have a wonderful presence that bolsters the work they do and use it as a growth tool in an established brick and mortar or online business. When you take my masterclass, it's about building confidence through creating a message-based system so you can increase your reputation and grow your reach, not become a posting machine. It's about consistency and reliability. I have anxiety. I in no way ever want my sales approach to trigger someone else. Would I sell more courses if I changed my approach? The market says yes. But that's the beauty of selling courses and masterclasses as the side piece of my business. Social media, consulting, and freelance PR are my core money generators. The others are bonuses. Anyway, I got completely sidetracked there, although I will link to that masterclass 
as well as the market video in the show notes. But my point is, is that the source of the information will shade the way you interpret the information. If someone is telling you you absolutely must do something and they stand to profit from you doing it, if there is real pressure and urgency to commit to something, you want to ask yourself why. Who benefits? The idea of being omnipresent on social media doesn't necessarily benefit you as much as it might the person telling you it will. Second, let's look at why you would want this strategy. Let's review your business plan. Like what are your actual goals for your business in two to three years? Because for most of us, social media is not at all a short-term success. If you want to boost your sales next week or get two new clients next month, you can use social media to help you. But depending on what you've been using it for up until now, it might not be such a great success tactic. It takes time and consistency to create a loyal following who will then invest in what you do. So what are your plans in two to three years? Do you have a monetary goal? Will you have a team or the funds to hire someone who can manage social media or content creation or your communications, someone to do this for you if it's not your jam? Because your strategy needs to fit your budget, your time frame, and be driven by your goals. Why would you feel bad about not posting a few times a day, every day, if your business is you and one part-time person? and you have children, or a sick parent, or your own health issues, or whatever it is that requires your time, energy, and attention, don't do that to yourself. If posting every day, no matter the tools available to help you do it, if that will cause you harm, don't do it. You can lay the foundations now by looking at your goals, evaluating what you can do with the time that you have, and just do that consistently to move towards those goals. Your goals might be to develop a new service or to stay in place while you create efficiencies in your back office. And if that's the case, will being on social really help you all that much? That idea of being omnipresent on social media just doesn't serve all business goals. Third, let's think about your brand. I'm willing to bet one of your brand values is quality. You aren't just shoving out any old thing, hoping somebody will buy it. (laughs) They're going to see it. They're going to be like, oh my God, I must have that and pay whatever it is that you want only to be disappointed. I bet you have a worthwhile offer, a service or a product that really genuinely fills someone's need. The content that you create should reflect your values. If you want to be perceived as providing quality, that quality needs to be present in everything your business produces, including your social media. If you want a social presence, think about how often you consistently create quality content. If you want a strategic social presence, think about how often you can create quality content. And look, I struggle with this right now. My social media business is growing, and while I figure the best systems and people to put in place to help me be more efficient, My own business social presence is struggling. I prioritize my client's social presence. And side note, it's funny because it's something that I hear from a lot of smaller independent social managers. Our business representation falls to the wayside because quality content creation takes time. It takes attention to detail. It takes messaging and strategy. It's more than just hashtags and short form video. It's really time heavy. I'm bouncing back to point two. What is your capability for hiring help? If you're doing it yourself, and especially if you're hiring someone, you need to ensure you provide quality to your audience if you want them to associate you with quality. Position yourself based on what you can realistically accomplish while maintaining the quality you feel good about. Not perfection, remember. We're being realistic here. But quality you can feel good about. That idea of being omnipresent on social, it doesn't suit every business's communications goals or style. My fourth and final point is that social media isn't the only way you can promote and grow your business. I know, I know, blasphemy. (laughs) If you truly dislike social media or don't have the time right now to learn about it, strategize for it, and then implement that strategy, 
there are other things you can do. In my upcoming and long-awaited course on creating a communication strategy and helping you decide the best methods of promoting your business, building your reputation, I outline several of those options. A snippet being, you can go on podcasts. You can be on Pinterest if you want tips on the Pinterest search engine, and that is linked in the show notes. You can hire an SEO expert like Brittany Murphy from Season 2, Episode 6, also linked, and make your website your best piece of promotional kit. You can create a referral scheme, host an event, collaborate with other businesses. You can be interviewed in a magazine. You can publish on Substack. You can put up posters or attend farmer's markets or whatever it is that works for you that doesn't involve you being on social media. The idea that you must be on social media all the time just doesn't work for everybody. The moral of the story is this. Don't bother comparing yourself to someone else. Don't compare yourself to a business that has different goals, a different budget, a different support system or makeup, or different priorities. It's great to be on email lists, and might I recommend mine, and it's great to see what your competition is doing, but that's for inspiration, not necessarily instruction. Their business success may be something to aspire to, but their methodology may not be the one for you. There's a difference between wanting the end result and blindly copying the strategy. Your job is to know your business and to work out the best way to achieve your goals. So be on the lists, check others out on social media, but keep an eye out on other avenues as well. Don't think you have to do what other businesses are doing. Consider the options and think about how they can help you fulfill your goals. You do you. You be you. And that authenticity is what will help you create your success because you deserve it and you don't need to copy others in order to achieve it. Thanks so much for listening today. And just a quick reminder to check out the show notes for the links that I mentioned. And until next week, my friend, I hope you have a fan freaking rest of your day.